So in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at getters and setters on objects in JavaScript. And a lot of people, when they start looking at getters and setters, kind of think, well, what are the point of these? What value do they add to my classes that I'm creating? And we'll take a look at some pointless examples first of all, but then we'll see how you can use getters and setters to control the behavior of properties on your objects when defining classes and then creating new objects from those classes. And we'll look at the ES6 version of doing this first, and then at the end of the tutorial, we'll look at how you would do this without ES6 classes, just in case you're working with legacy code or you need more control over the properties that you're defining on your objects. So let's take a look at setters and getters in JavaScript. So to understand getters and setters, let's first of all create a new class from which we can create a new object. So I've just got a file open called user.js, so I'm going to create a new class called user. So if we say class user. So if we wanted to create a new object based off of this class, which is kind of like a blueprint for objects, what I can do is I'll create a new variable and I'll just call it new user, and then we say new user. So using the new keyword, we'll create a new user object for us and store it in the variable new user. And if we log that out to the console to start off with, it just looks like a new object. And it behaves in the same way too, so we can just assign and access new properties on that object. So if we were to say something like new user.name is equal to Ali, you can see that new property gets set up on the object even though we haven't defined it in the class. And JavaScript doesn't complain about that at all. And we can access the value of that property on the object as well. So on our class, let's set up some getters and setters to help control how that name property gets handled. So to set up a setter, we basically use the set keyword and then the property that we're trying to create the setter for. So in this case, I'm going to say name. So this will be the property that's set up on the object and this will be a function so it'll accept a value and we can call that parameter anything that we like. And then I'm just going to say this.name is equal to value. So here, this is referring to the user object that's created, and we're basically saying the name property is going to be equal to the value that we assign via our setter. So if we go ahead and save this, the code will rerun and we'll actually get an error. And the reason for that is when on line nine, we try and assign a value to our new user object, the setter gets called, which will receive the value of Ali, which will then call this.name again, which again will call the setter and will end up in this infinite loop, which as you can see, the error that we've got is that we've exceeded the call stack because we've created an infinite loop. So this is because assigning a value to this.name will actually call the setter again. So we actually need to use a different property name when storing the value that's passed in via the setter. So a common thing to do with JavaScript is to just prefix our property name with an underscore, and thereby we don't call the setter again and that value is stored under this dot underscore name. So you'll notice the output in the console is now undefined because when we try and access the name property on the new user object, there's actually no value there. We haven't stored a value in the name property. It's actually living now in underscore name. But we don't want to access the underscore name property. We just want to access name without the underscore. So what we can do in our user class is set up a getter function. So if we go up here and say get name, and we don't need to pass in a value to that. And the property we want to retrieve is this dot underscore name. So you can see when the code reruns, we're now getting our user's name simply by accessing its name property. So maybe you're sitting there thinking, what do the setter and getter functions actually add to our user class? Because we've just recreated the same functionality that we had initially where we created a new property on the new user object. Well, that's a very good question. And at the moment, the answer is we're not adding any functionality. In fact, we're creating more work for us because we've got to set up that underscore name property and also explicitly set up the setter and getter functions. But the advantages of using setters and getters is that because we have this function block, we can actually add some more logic in there to control how storing the value in the property and returning its value is handled. So for example, we could set up some validation so that when we assign a new value to name, something happens. For example, we want to check for the existence of a username. So we could do something very trivial like saying if value.length is less than one, so if the string is empty, then we could throw a new error. So let's throw new error. And we could say something along the lines of please provide a name for the user. So if we go ahead and save that now, we see no change in the output. But when we assign a new value to name down here on the new user object, if we set that to an empty string, you can see we get our custom error in the console. So let's take another example and set up another property on the user object. Let's say, for example, we wanted to control the access and storing of a password value on the user object. So we can say set password and value as we did with the name property. 
And then we could add in some validation logic here. So we could say if the value length is less than six, so if the password's too short, for example, then we could throw an error. So we say throw new error, and we could say passwords must be at least six characters. But if that pass is okay, we'll set a new property up on the object and it'll be underscore password following the same convention as above. And let's set up a corresponding getter for our password property as well. Again, we don't need to pass in a value to the function. We just want to retrieve that underscore password property. But maybe by default, we don't want to display the password to the user in their app. Perhaps we just want to show a string of asterisks as a kind of placeholder for the password. So we could say something like return a string of asterisks and we could repeat that for the length of the password. So let's try using that setter and getter for our password property. Let's first of all fix our name property here. And let's say new user dot password is equal to PWD, which should trigger the error in our setter. So you can see passwords must be at least six characters long. So let's add some more characters to that. So that seems to have gone through okay. Let's access its property with our getter. So rather than seeing the password that we set above on the object, we're actually getting that string, which is returned from the password getter. Just a little side note here as well, this isn't a secure way of storing passwords, it's just an example to show how setters and getters work. For example, we can still access that underscore property on the object, and therefore see the user's password. So it's definitely not a secure way of storing data on an object. This is just merely an example of how you can actually use setters and getters to customise the way properties on an object behave. So if you didn't know, the ES6 class syntax is actually syntactic sugar over JavaScript's existing object creation mechanisms. So let's finish up the tutorial by looking how you would do this if you weren't using the ES6 class syntax. For example, if you're looking at older code, or for whatever reason you can't use ES6. So the equivalent non-ES6 version of creating a class would be to use a function to construct a new object. So here we've just recreated what we had at the start of the tutorial, but avoiding using the ES6 class syntax. So again, we can set up new properties on our new user object. So we can say new user dot name is equal to Sam, for example. And you can see that property is available in our object and we can access it by saying dot name on the new user object. And to set up our setters and getters on our user object, we actually need to use a specific function, which is the object dot define property function. So we say object.definePropity and this function actually takes a couple of parameters and the first is the object that we want to set up the new property on. So the property is going to be created on the user object but we actually need to set this up on its prototype so that any new objects that are created from the user function as on line 5 where we're using the new keyword to create a new user and then we give it the property name that we're creating. So let's set up the name property. The final argument that we pass into the define property function here is an object. And we're going to set up two properties. We're going to set up a set property and a get property. So these correspond to the setter and getter functions that we created in the ES6 class. And each of these will accept a function in the same way we set up in the previous example. So for our set function, we'll accept a value. And let's put our validation logic in here as well. So we'll test the value length. So if the string is empty, if it's less than one, we could use some other mechanism to test if the string is empty here as well. But just for consistency, I'll use this approach. And if that is the case, we're going to throw a new error. And we'll just say, please provide a username. But if that goes through OK, what we'll do is we'll set, in the same way that we did before, we'll set the underscore name property of the object equal to value. And our getter is going to be really straightforward. We'll set up another function, and all that's going to do is return this dot underscore name. So everything looks like it's working okay. The output in the console is the same. But let's test our custom logic in the setter is working okay by assigning an empty string to the name property. And there you can see our custom error is being displayed in the console. So there you have it. You've got two ways that you can set up a setter or a getter. You're probably going to be using the ES6 class approach more often than not. But if you are working with some legacy code, be aware that you might come across this kind of syntax. And the define property function has got load more options that you can use to customize the behavior of an object. So if you do need some extra control, then this approach will offer that to you. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you understand now how setters and getters work with JavaScript objects and how you can use them when you're creating your own classes. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. And I'll see you next time.